Talk to us about these NAFTA negotiations. It's a little troubling that we haven't got anywhere yet, particularly for car dealers and car makers, right? Uh, having a trade deal without Canada is absolutely unthinkable. It's uh, our friendly neighbor <laughs> to the north. We have a wonderful 3,000-mile border that's uh, peaceful, and it is our biggest export market. And in total, trade is balanced with Canada when you include goods and services. So it's really a head-scratcher why we're in this uh, predicament. I have no issue with updating NAFTA. That's fine. But to uh, say Canada is going to be left out of this economic integrated uh, entity that's been uh, created in North America is, is truly alarming. So I, I just fundamentally believe somehow, some way, uh, this trade deal is going to get done. How is it affecting the relationship between car makers and car dealers who also depend to some extent for funding on car makers? It's a very, you know, roundabout kind of relationship. Everyone in the automobile industry, doesn't matter whether you're a retailer, a supplier, or a manufacturer, is freaked out around tariffs on automobiles. Because the price point is so big, we all know that it will be extremely disruptive to the industry, extremely expensive to the industry, most likely knock the economy into some sort of recession because it's very inflationary. It, Auto tariffs would make uh, steel and aluminum tariffs look like a company picnic. I mean, it is the big one. And so um, it, it's incomprehensible that there won't be a, a resolution around this, whether it's with the Europeans or within NAFTA. There, there is a global supply chain with parts moving back and forth borders every day, multiple times. Mm -hmm. And if you just take Canada, we ship all the engines and transmissions <laughs> into Canada. Okay, the final assembly there. So now you're going to tariff it coming back into the United States? It makes absolutely no sense. You've talked a lot about Europe and NAFTA. I want to talk quickly as well about China. Uh, how much of an impact are you pricing in as it relates to tariffs with China? We've been going tit for tat. Today it seems like we've de-escalated it a little bit. But overall, it does seem in the broader scheme of things, tariffs, tensions with China are picking up. How much does that impact you? Well, first I would say, when you talk about tariffs with China and the trade situation with China, I think, I think that's the battle to, to fight. I think that's the one to fight, and no one's been willing to do it for decades. So I sort of tip my hat to the administration in taking on China. Why you're taking on the whole world at the same time, that's another story. But China, yeah. And I don't think it's going to be so easy to resolve. I mean, China has had its way for decades uh, the way it is, so it's not going to be so easy to unravel. And I think people who mitigate the risk by just doing the direct math are leaving out that tariffs are inflationary because elsewhere in the supply chain, prices get raised because tariffs went in over here. You see that in steel tariffs. The domestics producing in the U.S. that have nothing to do with tariffs raise prices because their competition price got raised because of tariffs. So they are inflationary. They are disruptive. And I hope um, that progress, real progress, is made uh, with China.